Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're posing the question, who benefits from lockdowns in Thailand? And this is not a rhetorical question. I think if, if one were to look at this, they might think, oh, he's sort of asking, you know, the Latin phrase, qui bono, you know, who benefits, as in there is some beneficiary you're not seeing. That's not the reason for this video. I'm honestly asking the question because I can't see who benefits from these lockdowns at all. I just, I don't see what the benefit is when, when you look at it sort of from a bird's eye view. So we're gonna take just a quick look. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this up here. Uh, this, is, these, this is a graph, this is from Our World in Data from their website. And this shows the COVID case numbers up to basically right around the time of the vi uh, filming of this video, July 26, 2021. This was actually sent to us uh, by a friend of our channel who went ahead and put these, these arrows in here. And again, we're gonna put this on screen, you can see this. And he points at one where it's the mask mandate and then points at the other, which to me is more pertinent to this regarding the lockdown. And if you notice, the, the time the lockdown started, shortly thereafter, things went parabolic almost in terms of case numbers, which begs the question, who benefits from this? Is, is there some great benefit being garnered by these lockdowns? It, it, you, know, it, if, you know, if you sort of inverted this graph and you know, you put, you put the top, the sort of parabolic top end on the other side over on the left side of the page and then said, okay, this is where it began and then boom, things started to drop. I would say, okay, you know, it looks to me like there's at least a correlation, perhaps not causation, between locking down the country and some impact on case numbers. Meanwhile, you know, correlation is not causation. You couldn't say that. At the same time, you can't say the same thing about this, that somehow lockdowns caused a parabolic rise in case numbers. The, although, you know, I, I'm not making this argument, but there are those that might out there then say, well, hey, you know, we were in this dip back in, you know, back at the end of that, there was sort of a double spike, like an M, looks like an M there in the graph and then it dips way down and then boom, the lockdown starts and then boom, all of these, all these case numbers come, come out. You know, obviously that's not the case. Lockdown doesn't cause this. Although there, there has been some discussion out there I've seen from physicians that do sort of wonder if people being all cooped up, not being outside very much, uh, being in close proximity to people quite a bit might actually cause more problems. I, I don't think it would cause this level. The point of this video is, again, who benefits? You know, supposedly these lockdowns are being put in place to stop cases, presumably, although that wasn't what they told us at the beginning. For those in the West, they can all remember two weeks to flatten the curve. Here in Thailand, it was, okay, we're going to go through this one lockdown, phased reopening, and then we'll be on our way. And then that led to another lockdown back in December, which led to another lockdown in April, and then that led to the latest round, you know, and, and along the way, we got all this terminology change. It's a non-lockdown, it's this and that. And now we're, you know, where we are. But that, to me, that's an, that's an interesting data point there to see this graph and to see that, okay, lockdowns commence and, and then things got worse. So at the very least, it, to me, there's an argument to be made that these things don't really have, this lockdown doesn't really impact spread of the virus much at all, just from the data. Meanwhile, there are those out there, and I've heard people use this argument on against this, and you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, that's not my point, but I think it's a rather fallacious argument is when people say, well, how much worse would it have been had we not had the lockdown? Well, let's look at this. This is parabolic. I mean, it really shoots up. So, you know, it's pretty darn bad. It, let's just let's just all agree on that as just as as just foundation you know agreement that you know it 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 goes pretty much parabolic so i don't know how much worse one thinks it could get but also you know just from a a logic standpoint that is an illogical argument 
it's it's basically proving a neg. You know, how do you prove a negative? Nobody knows. And also, it goes into the whole notion of a false argument being one that you can't prove. You know, a an illogical argument is one that you cannot falsify. You know, where where basically somebody says, "Oh, well, X is true." Well, okay, when is X not true? Well, if it's never not true, and every and the goalposts essentially move any time you look at the thing, and, and try to falsify or create a data set where something can be falsified, and the goalposts just move. It begs the question: Is that an entirely false argument to begin with? So going back to you know who benefits, you know we know who doesn't benefit. If you create sort of a null set here, we know that businesses have not benefited from this. The economy has not benefited from this. Socially, we've not benefited from this. The tourism sector has massively not benefited from this. I, and I don't think there's anyone that really has benefited from this. I know there's a lot of folks out there. Well, you know, big stores, big companies. I'm pretty sure they would really rather like to have their retail locations frequented by people buying things. They've got rent to pay too. You know, I, I don't really think there's some grand scheme out there with respect to this. That said, I think we can get pulled into kind of a cul-de-sac of, of logic or illogic and kind of keep doubling down on things that supposedly work. And, and I've, I've stated this in other videos on this channel. They, there's certain folks out there that seem to continue to bandy the lockdown argument about as if it self-evidently works. Well, this graph would seem to suggest otherwise, not to mention mass mandates, which really isn't the thrust of this video, but the person that sent this to us had that pointed out there as well. In any event, you know, again, who benefits? It brings up a really good question, which brings me to, I'm going to go ahead and quote some numbers here from Johns Hopkins University. This is confirmed cases in Thailand is, and this is from coronavirus.jhu.edu. So confirmed cases, 526,828, deaths 400, or excuse me, 4,264. Again, this is John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University. On top of that, I wanted to go ahead and put some perspective on this. And what's the total population of Thailand? Well, as of 2020, and this is according to the World Bank at data.worldbank.org, the total population of Thailand in 2020 was 69,799,978 people. So we've got 526,000 confirmed cases of COVID 526,828 confirmed cases of COVID. Well, so percentage of the overall population of Thailand who have contracted COVID is 0.75%. Meanwhile, deaths from COVID, we have 4,000, 42,000, excuse me, 4,264 deaths. So percentage of those who've been confirmed to have COVID who've died in Thailand is 0.08% of that initial 0.75% of the total population. So less than 1% of 1% have died in Thailand from COVID. Okay, and just to, just to sort of round this out, the percentage of the total population who've died from COVID, as of now, based on, based on the population of Thailand in 2020, which I don't think has appreciably changed, the number, the percentage of the population who have died in Thailand from COVID is, by my calculation, 0.0061%. So there's that. The, so the total deaths, while well, well, terrible, 4,264 deaths, while well, terrible, is not a, it, it, it's not even a half of 1% of it's a, it's a very low percentage. It's, it's 0.0061%. Now, I, I understand the media sort of goes out there and they, they kind of get breathless over the ongoing numbers. And look, I, I get it. The watching a virus spread in real time is rather awe-inspiring. It, it, when you're looking at the numbers, it's like a, 
you know, it's like a glacier bursting, you know, or a, a dam breaking. I mean, it's pretty amazing. But I think it's worth noting that, you know, the economy here in Thailand, at least in Bangkok and the dark red zones, which is getting to be more and more of the country, at least more populous parts of the country, it's moribund. You know, we're, we're, we're really, I've said it before, decimated is not an incorrect word, especially in the SME sector of, of the economy. You know, things are really bad. The tourism sector is basically gone for the moment. I mean, presumably a lot of that can come back online, but when is this going to end? And again, who benefits? You know, we've seen a total, you know, total number of deaths is 526,828 cases of that 4,264 deaths. So that means we either have, we have approximately 521,000 people who've gotten it and recovered or have yet to recover but haven't died. I'm not, I'm not going to go out there and say only 4,264 deaths. No, no death is good. We don't want that. But, you know, I have to imagine there are as many, if not more, deaths. And we, we've done videos on this, and I, I haven't actually looked at car fatalities in total throughout the year of 2021 thus far, or any year in Thailand. But I have to imagine it's higher than that, in ter especially in terms of percentage of the population. And no one is out there asking that all car travel stop. And before someone tells me that's a straw man argument, it really isn't. Because due to 0.0061% of the population dying, the public, and, and I'm not saying the public hasn't, but and many uh, folks that are you know, policymakers have mandated that the entire country must cease to function. It really isn't a, a false argument. It isn't a false comparison. If we looked at road fatalities and everyone, sa and, and, and everyone said, oh, this is a terrible, this is a pandemic of death on the roads, we now have to all stop traveling by car, it's really not a dissimilar response. It's, it's, not, it's not any more of an extreme response to what we're currently seeing. So I, I, I do pose seriously the question, who benefits from this? You know, especially, again, we'll put that graph back up, where you see that the lockdown comes into effect, the, the, the harsh one that we've seen. And we've been on an effective lockdown to one degree or another, going all the way back, really, to April of 2020. But point being, the lockdown comes in and then we see this parabolic rise. To me, that at least raises the reasonable question, and I think a lot of data points, which we've discussed in other videos on this channel, concur with this. It raises the reasonable question of whether or not lockdowns are effective to begin with. And if they're not, their economic impact and the lack of benefit or the destruction of benefits associated with that economic fallout far outweighs anything that we're gaining, I would say, from lockdowns here in Thailand.